we get to speak to him, we get to worship him. And so I, mean, I hope your heart is ready for a, for a morning of, of worship and, and encounter with God, right? Let me open with a word of prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together. Thank you for giving us a place to gather as your church. I pray, Lord, um, that you will touch our hearts in a powerful way this morning, Father. Father, we open up our lives to you today and I ask, Lord, that you will speak to us, Father, through your spirit, through your word, through worship, Father, that you will speak to our hearts, that you will encourage our hearts, Father, for those who are are hurting this morning, those who are struggling this morning. Father, I pray that you will give them comfort today. Father, that you will speak words of encouragement into their hearts and to their minds. Uh, Father, that they will walk out of here feeling loved and known and noticed. Uh, so I pray that blessing over those who are struggling today. Father, those of us who are filled with joy this morning, I pray, Father, that you will give us the freedom to express that to you today in our time of worship. May you speak into us and speak through us in a powerful way today. Thank you, Lord. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's stand and let's sing. O heavens, and pour out your righteousness. Let the earth open wide so salvation and righteousness can sprout up together. I, the Lord, created them. Isaiah 45, 8.
standing. Go ahead and take a seat, folks. Take a seat. This is the, the time in our, in our service where we, uh, we take communion together. And um, when I was reflecting on a tragedy that happened recently at a mall in Texas where a gunman shot and, and he killed eight people and nine others were wounded. There was a former police officer who was one of the first responders and, and he, he ran around try, trying to help the victims and, and then he came across the, uh, this body of, of a woman and uh, when he rolled the woman over, a boy came out from underneath her. So she had protected her son. She had taken the bullets that were intended for her boy. And the little boy was like, my mom is hurt, my mom is hurt. This mother protected her son. Now what would make a person do something like that? Love. Like deep love, right? Mothers are willing to do whatever it takes to provide and to protect their children. Now I share the story because this is the sacrificial love that is the heart of your God toward you. Now he never took a bullet for you, but he went to a cross for you, right? And he took your place and he did it on your behalf. Matthew chapter 20, verse 17, it says, Now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. On the way, he, he took the twelve aside, and he said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and to the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he will to life, to be raised to life. Guys, Jesus knew exactly what they were going to do to him. He knew they were going to mock him. He knew they were going to flog him. He knew that they were going to nail him to the cross until he took his last breath, right? But he went to Jerusalem anyway. He loves you that much. As we take communion this morning, as we take the bread and the cup, but what we're doing is, is we're remembering that amazing sacrifice, that amazing love, you know. When we, when we eat the bread, we're remembering the body that was broken. When we drink the juice, we, we remember the blood that was shed. And, and we're grateful and we're thankful. And, and we know we don't deserve it, and, but, but it's because of love that, that he did that. So. Will you reflect on that as you take communion this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, thank you just for your unconditional love for every single one of us here. Father, we, we don't deserve it, <laughs> but we get it. We, we appreciate and love you. We remember you this morning as we take communion together in Jesus' name.
Let's praise and let's worship.
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble at them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6 Everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counted it, counting it all garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ, for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Philippians 3, 8 through 12.
Just sing another song, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sing. You don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in you. Nothing else, nothing else, Jesus. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else. Nothing else will do, and I 
nothing else, nothing else will do. do we just want you we want to be in your presence we want to just kneel at your feet Lord God we want your Holy Spirit to just pour over us we want nothing else we don't ask for blessings we don't want anything from you Lord God except your presence that's what we're seeking Lord God we want to know you intimately we want a relationship with you that is so in tune with each other, Lord God, that we can, we can know exactly what you want us to do. Nothing else will do. No other relationship comes close to the relationship that we want to have with you, to the relationship that we can have with you. I pray for anyone in your house today, Lord God, who does not understand that nothing else will do that nothing else comes close, that nothing else can take your place, Lord God, that you are King of kings, you are Lord of lords, you are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning and the end, you are the King over all kings, you went to a cross and you died a horrible, horrible death for us, Lord God, for me, you died for me. And I just pray that if anybody doesn't understand, you died for them. Whether they accept you or they do not, you still died for them. And Lord God, I just pray if they don't know that, that they do today, that you press it upon their heart today, that you make them understand today that there is nothing else that they need in this life. There is nothing else they need in this world. But Jesus, they need Jesus. They need Jesus. And we say it in the mighty, mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Welcome to week three of our series, uh, Overflow. Now, the big idea of the series is that we have a God who has blessed us with more than what we need, like to overflow, right? And the reason He's given us more than we need in all different areas of our lives is so that, that all of those blessings will flow over into the people around us. But we block it sometimes. And so we're talking in the series about how we could take full advantage of this incredible blessing that God has given us. Now, you know, um, I need you to know that we're going to talk about generosity today. All right? Now, here's what happens when a pastor starts speaking about generosity. There's someone in the crowd who goes, oh, yeah, they go. Typical church. Talking about money again. Hey, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not talking about money. God's not after your money. He's after your heart. Now listen, if, if your money is standing between you and God, well, you guys sort that out, okay? Figure that out. But today I'm talking about generosity. And I want us to live generous, generous lives. And so we're going to chat about that a little bit. I've got another disclaimer at the start of this message. Because when we talk about these overflowing blessings from God, more and more and more and more blessings... There comes a moment where we might think that we have earned those blessings. It's because I'm such a good person, you know, I'm just such an awesome human being, and that's why God is blessing me over and over and over again. Hey, listen, it's got nothing to do with what you've done, okay? Those blessings are a free gift from God. 
He blesses us whether we are incredible or not. We're all incredible, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, we don't earn those blessings, all right? But I will say this, that when He does bless us, right, He's trusting us with those blessings. And when we take those blessings and we are good stewards of those blessings, well, then He knows He can trust us with more blessings. And then more blessings come, not because we earned it, right? They're free from Him. And it seems weird that that I would be saying that, but it's the truth. Like we get them as a free gift, but as we are good stewards with them, the blessings keep coming. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today, and uh, it's pretty awesome. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, so if you've got your Bibles with you, let's turn there. And uh, let me just tell you a little bit that, that Apostle Paul is writing here to the church in Corinth. And he is confident enough in them to ask them for a financial offering, a, a contribution. He's, he's trying to raise some money to help the poor people in Jerusalem. And so he's, he's connecting with the Corinth church, and, and he's writing this letter to them. And similar to what we do through uh, our mission known, is we, we're helping poor people in other countries and other places. And, and, um, and so the similar kind of a concept, right? And, and, then, and he says to this church, man, you need to help out. Now, before the section that we're going to read today, he, he challenges them a little bit. He, he says, hey, you know, the, the Macedonian church, they're not as wealthy as you, but they're more generous than you. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Step up to the plate a little bit here, right? You've made a promise that you're going to help, so I want you to do that. Act on that promise. So we're going to pick it up here in verse 6. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Overflowing. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Verse 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God because of the service by which you have proved yourselves. Others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace that God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It's such a powerful passage, guys, and and it contains so much truth. We're going to break it down in little bite-sized chunks, right? But starting right here in verse 6, it says, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. In other words, man, a cheap giver will be a cheap receiver. And a generous giver will be a generous receiver. So if you want to overflow with joy, if you want to overflow with happiness and purpose in your life, if you want to overflow with the blessings of God, right, start by sowing seeds of generosity, seeds of gratitude, man, because you get what you put in. I know you think I'm talking about money only here. I'm not only talking about money. I'm talking about generosity, right? I'm talking about when you sow generously the things that God has given you, when you become a generous person and you are ready to share everything that God has given you, that's a generous person. That's a generous person. Now, it might include money, yeah, but it also includes things like expertise and knowledge and time and grace and peace. Forgiveness, all of these things that God has given you, we share generously. Because Jesus is generous, we're generous. We sow generously what God has given us into the people around us. What this does, guys, 
is it creates a cycle in our lives. Now, we, we're going to have a cycle in our lives. We can either, either have a selfish cycle or a generous cycle. A selfish cycle is not as appealing. Here's what it looks like. God provides. Not because you deserve it, but he provides. He gives you all kinds of things in your life. He blesses you to overflowing. But if you're selfish, you hoard it all. Mine. Mine, right? And we spend whatever God gives us on ourselves. Gifts, talents, finances, all of it. We spend it on ourselves. And the blessing never moves beyond us. It stays with us. We hoard it all. And what this does is it creates an emptiness inside of us. Because that stuff doesn't satisfy, guys. It doesn't. It doesn't satisfy us when we hold on to it. Hoarding never satisfies, ever. It always leaves us empty and fulfilled. And it makes us ungrateful. So our ingratitude increases. We, like, we start to blame God for our emptiness. God, where are you? And we forget that he's the one who's meeting our needs and, and we rarely see any impact in the lives around us. Why? Because we hold it on to all of it. But because he's God, he continues to bless you. And you continue to hold on to it. And you continue to feel empty. And you continue to feel ingrate, ungrateful. It's a selfish cycle. There's a better way, guys. It's called the generosity cycle. You see the colors there? It's pretty cool, hey? <laughs> God provides. We receive more than what we need from our generous God. He provides, and, and we recognize that it is Him that has given me everything that I have. It's, it's all Him. He's pouring into me. He's pouring into me, and, and it's overflowing in me, so I give generously, right? So I sow seeds, and, and we generously plant what He has given us. He's given me all the stuff. I get to plant it in others, right, in people around me. And He takes that seed that we've planted, and He multiplies it. He grows it. Takes our finances, takes our resources, takes our gifts and our talents, and, and he does what only God can do, and he, he multiplies them. We, we, we give him five loaves and two fish. He feeds 5,000. Oh, and fills up 12 baskets when we're done. That's what God does, right? He takes our gifts, and they might seem small to us, but he takes them and he multiplies them, and then we're like, whoa! And our gratitude increases. Why? Because we can see God working through us and in us. And, and we're like, wow, this is amazing. And our generosity makes us grateful. And our eyes are open to God's plans. And we're blown away by this. And, and so, man, we, we see that he's the one who's providing. And he keeps providing. And we're more generous. And oh, my gosh. And then we're fulfilled. And he multiplies. And, and we're excited. And we're grateful. And so he gives us and we're more. And that's the cycle, right? I'm going to pull a hamstring. But you get the picture, right? It's a beautiful cycle of generosity. We reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. A farmer is dependent upon what he sows. Unless seeds are planted, there will be no crop, right? But when a seed is deposited in the ground, it's like an investment because it, it grows. And, and what does it do? It produces more seeds. And they grow. And they plant it again. And they produce a bigger crop and a bigger crop, right? And the more seeds, the bigger the investment. That's what it looks like. Whoever sows generously reaps generously. I'm not preaching a pres prosperity gospel here. That's false teaching. I'm just saying, man, we, we, need to, we need to sow seeds and we reap what we sow, right? Verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So all giving should be willing. No one can force you to be generous. This has got to come from your heart, from your heart. And this is not just about the gift, man. This is the attitude behind the gift, okay? I, I know a lot of people who give a lot of money, but they're not generous. They give because they get a tax deduction, you know? 
But man, ask them to, to give you their time or, or, their, or their resources or, or some sympathy. or ah, No, don't ask me for stuff, but yeah, here's a check. I'll write a check. That's not generous, right? That's not the generosity we're talking about. That's not a cheerful giver. It's all about the heart. You remember the story that Mark told about the widow in Mark chapter 12. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, come come, 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 come see this. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, she put in everything, all she had to live in. That's a cheerful giver. That's a generous heart, right? It wasn't about the amount. It was the heart behind the amount. You get that? We are cheerful in our giving when we understand that everything we have came from God anyway. We are grumpy givers when we think that the stuff that we have belongs to us. It doesn't. It doesn't. It does not belong to you. It does not belong to me. When God is your source, then you can be cheerful in giving. Why? Because you understand that there would be no possibility of giving anything if it hadn't been given to you in the first place. If I know God has provided for all of my needs, well, then I'll cheerfully share the food that God gave me. I'll cheerfully share the knowledge that God gave me. I will cheerfully share the gifts and the talents that God gave me because he gave them to me in the first place. The other day, our our daughter Mackenzie, she's five years old. Um, I heard that she was outside playing with her friends and I heard the door open and then two minutes later I heard the door close and she was out again. And about 20 minutes later, she came back and she had, you know those plastic raspberry containers? There's two sides to them, you know? That thing was full in the fridge. We just bought it. And those raspberries aren't cheap, you know? So she came in. She took that thing of raspberries and a thing of whipped cream under her arm. And she (laughs) ran outside. And these little five-year-olds sat there (laughs) spraying and eating. And she was being so generous. Because she didn't buy the stuff. When we understand it's not ours anyway, we'll be more generous, wouldn't we? Right? We get to share. Listen, our stuff, our money, it doesn't belong to us, man. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. It's all his. It's all his, guys. And, and, And he's a giver. Belongs to him and he's a giver, so give it away. He's given you and I everything that we have, everything. And if, you, if we want to be more like God, well, then we are most like him when we are generous, when we are giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever so Paul's next statement is to those cheerful givers he's like man hey God is able to bless you abundantly like there's more coming guys give it away there's more coming I'm going to bless you abundantly overflowing abundant blessing give it away your cups give it away your cups give it away a blessing is a God-given capacity to experience and enjoy and extend the goodness of Extend the goodness and the favor in your life so that you will abound in every good work. That's a generous person. This means that we have an understanding that he has entrusted us with his blessings. And he wants his blessings to flow through us into the world. We are the conduit of his blessing. And when we have stingy hearts and we are reluctant to give, We clog and we block that flow. It's like having a heart attack, man. A heart attack occurs when the flow of blood to the heart, right, is is severely reduced or blocked. And the blockage is usually due to a buildup of fat 
and cholesterol in the arteries. It's a blockage. Now your heart is a powerful muscle and it's pumping man, nutrient and oxygen-rich blood to every nook and cranny of your body, right? It's powerful. It's life-giving, life-giving blood, right? It's crucial to remain alive. But if there's a blockage there, it doesn't matter how much blood you have in your body. It's not going where it needs to go and your life is over. If you don't unblock that artery, you will die. That's what selfishness is like. It's this blessing from God flowing, huge, rich, man, pouring into us. And we're like mine. It's like a heart attack. It's a buildup of fat. And it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. A life that is free from blockage looks like this. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work flowing in. Amazing blessings flowing in and in and out to those around us. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. This picture, God's blessings flowing through you abundantly. Why? Because you're generous. Because you know it's not yours anyway. You're just a conduit, right? Then Paul quotes Psalm 112. He says, They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. See, when God's kingdom is our priority and we know where, we get, where it all comes from, man, we are, it flows unhindered and freely into the lives of those around us. And what a beautiful thing. When a person moves from, from being selfish to being generous, it is a beautiful thing. I've, I've had the privilege to see this many times. I think one of the best that I've seen is, was, a, was a guy I met many years ago. His name's Mike Fox, and his wife is Beth. That's Mike and Beth. Mike was a successful businessman, very, very wealthy guy, lots of money. He made his fortune in the propane gas industry. And he, he had plans to, in the mid-50s, mid he, he had plans to, to retire early and to, and to move to Florida, you know, and, and get a big fishing boat. And, and then when he wasn't on the boat, he wanted to go, go play golf at all the country clubs. And, and when he wasn't on the boat or on the golf courses, then he wanted to travel the world and, and live in luxury and go to all the cities and just you know, spend all of his money that he had made. And then something happened. <laughs> in 2003, he, him and his wife went to dinner with a missionary couple from Thailand. And they told him about another missionary who was from the Philippines who was providing care for abandoned children in a refugee camp on the border of Thailand and Myanmar. And they said, man, they're trying to build a little building for them. Could you donate some money? And so they wrote a check for $750 to help them build a shanty. It looks like this. And then they started supporting them month to month with finances to feed these kids and clothe the kids and educate the kids and looked after these 17 children, these 17 Karun orphans that were living there. And then after a while, Mike, Mike decided, well, I'm, I think I'm going to go to Thailand and go and see what, you know, what our money is doing and how it's helping. And, and so he, he left to go visit these kids in Thailand. And before he left, his, his wife handed him and he got to read it on the plane. And that's what it said. It said, you're embarking on a journey, Mike. And we don't know where you're going, and we don't know how God is going to use you. But wherever it is, I'm there 100% in support. I've never been so proud of you. I've never been so excited about our future. So Mike goes, he's going to go meet the children. And, um, and, and he purchased before he, left, before he arrived at the, at, the, at the children's home. He, he bought a little gift package for each kid with toys and things in it, you know, uh, for the 17 kids. And... And so he arrives there, and the, and the kids are waiting. They're all lined up, and they're, they're smiling. And he has a picture of the kids, and they're all excited to see him. And, and then they tell them to sit down. They all sit down. And, and, uh, and then one by one, they come up to meet Mike, and then he hands him a gift, you know. And Swati Kaap, you know, and they give him a gift. And they go sit down, and, and, you know, he hands out 17 gifts. Well, there were 19 children. <laughs> The caretakers were stretching the money a little bit and helping two extra kids. And so he's feeling terrible. He's embarrassed, you know. And, and he's looking at these kids and he's expecting for them to start looking around and, and wondering, when am I going to get my gift? And they never did. They were just filled with joy. They were just so grateful. 
They, they were at home. They had a home. They had food. They had clothes. They had education. They're happy. Good. They weren't worried about the gift. And he, he said it taught him such a, a big, huge lesson about love and humility and contentment. So, so he goes home. He flies home. And he tells his wife all about it. And, and man, they, they decide together they, that they're going to devote themselves, their lives, and anything and everything to help as many orphans around the world as they can. And so they started a nonprofit organization called the Global Orphan Project. And they dreamed when they started this that perhaps one day they could have 10 homes like that. 10. We're talking like 200 kids. Woo! All right, so they decided to be generous. They're on the generous cycle. You get that? So they decide to be generous. And what does God do with it? He multiplies, right? He multiplies and turns out, man, that God did what only God can do. They now serve 100,000 children in 11 countries overseas and 35,000 children in 28 states right here in the U.S. through the Utah foster care system, through the foster care system, the national foster care system. You know, that the care portal that we have on our website where you can give to kids in the foster, they started that thing. A couple never did retire to Florida. <laughs> never happened for them. They, they've invested all of their money into the overhead to cover the Global Orphan Project. All of the staff, everybody who works for them is covered by their money. And they've freely scattered their gifts to the poorest and the most needy children around the world. I traveled to Haiti with Mike one year. And to see this man with his children, wow. God had taken this heart of this selfish, self-made man. And it was complete. He was now this generous, here I am. Not, not just my money, here I am. This is me. This is my life. It was complete. God had transformed the heart and the purpose of this man and, and made him incredibly generous. They freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. It's so beautiful. In verse 10, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks. To God, guys, this is so important. The one who supplies the seed is also the one who multiplies the seed. It's all his, man. It's all his anyway, right? And so you and I can be generous on every occasion. And Mike and Beth understood this. They realized this. And they have had way more enjoyment giving God's money away than they ever would have. He wasn't going to catch any fish anyway, man. <laughs> so much more enjoyment giving it away than spending it on themselves. And when you and I realize that our generosity is out of the overflow of what God gives us, well, then we get to enjoy the giving. We are just a conduit of blessing. Comes in, goes out. And listen, there are children all over the world right now, like right now, and they're thanking God. They don't know who Mike and Beth Fox are. They have no clue. They're thanking God that he has provided a home for them, that he has provided food for them, that he has provided clothes for them, that he has provided church for them. They're thanking God. They're not thanking Mike and Beth. They're thanking God because God has provided his work. It was his anyway, man. They were just generous, right? God working in us and God working through us results in thanksgiving to God. Verse 13, because of the service which, by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God 
for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. See, guys, our ministry and our generosity, man, it's proof of of God's goodness and His provision. And when you and I are generous, people glorify God. It's a tangible expression of of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, now those who refuse to give or those who who give under compulsion, we short-circuit that that flow of blessing before it even starts. God provides mine. It goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. But when we graciously and we generously share with those that God has put around us, they praise God. He gets the glory. The passage concludes in verse 15. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. He's like, "Woo! thank you, God. Unbelievable gift. Why? Why does he do that? <laughs> Think about this. God thinks that you and I are worthy of being a conduit of his blessing. He looks at you and he goes, I'm going to bless you and I know you're going to bless those around you. Oh my gosh, you are worthwhile. You've got this. You've got it. He thinks that you are, that is so, that's an indescribable gift. That the creator of the universe thinks I've got what it takes to be a conduit of grace. You've got to be kidding me. Ephesians 2 verse 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And like I said earlier, it's not from yourselves, it's a gift of God, right? Not by works, so so no one can boast. Don't don't boast about your stuff. (laughs) Don't do it. For, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God created us and he filled us to overflowing, not so that we would think, I'm all that. Look at me. I'm the CEO. I'm the self-made man. Mm -mm. No, not so that we would hoard the gifts he gave us and spend them on ourselves. Not so that we would take the credit for what he has given us. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I love this version of 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God will generously provide all you need, and then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. That's called generosity. He's given you everything you have and plenty so that you will share. So don't hold on to it, right? That's what generosity is. And you cannot outgive God And you give it away, he's going to replenish. I'm telling you. You plant those seeds, guess what, man? There's going to be a barn full of seeds again to plant. Be generous. Don't hold back. God loves a cheerful giver. Generosity. Yeah, I was thinking about that this week. It's because of the generosity of God's people that we have a building like this. Debt-free, generous hearts, so that we can hang out, right? Because of God's generosity, there's a beautiful school across the parking lot. There's a parking lot because of generosity. <laughs> generosity. God, people going, you know, God gave it to me. Uh, uh, here we go. Take it. Do something. Because of God's generosity, man, I get to preach the gospel here every week. <laughs> Our kids get to learn hear about Jesus. We get to host VBS. Our band gets to do what they're doing, you know. We get to worship. We get to, it's, it's, all, it's all generosity. 73 people last year getting baptized. There they rocks right there. 23 so far this year. Generosity. It's a place where people can come and hear the gospel. It's, it's, it's all pl- planting seeds, right? Instead of holding on to it myself, like this is mine. And man, we do that as Christians sometimes. I mean, God has blessed us with grace, you know, and, and love and joy and forgiveness. And we hold on to it. And we don't give those around us grace and love and joy and forgiveness. 
God has blessed us with finances and we hold on to it. We don't, we don't share that with those around us. What? Come on. God gives us food. We're like, man, we eat more than we need, like more calories than we need. <laughs> you guys should stop doing that. We do. We, we, take, we take the gifts that he's given us and we, we hoard them. I'm definitely talking to myself here. My wife challenged me this week. She's like, honey, you need to be a little more generous. Yes, ma'am, I'm preaching on it this weekend. <laughs> I'm going to close out with this, Acts chapter 20. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this church. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for challenging our hearts today. Whew. Father, I, I pray, Lord, that you will transform our hearts um, from selfishness to generosity, Father, that we will, we will recognize and, and know deep in our minds and in our hearts, Lord, that Everything we have is from you. Father, will you open our eyes to that, Father? That even our families are a gift from you, Father. Our jobs are a gift from you. Our homes, our income, our, our food, our talents, Father, are a gift from you. Our, the ability to speak and to reason and to count is a gift from you, Father. The ability to see and to hear. And, and Father, just to literally be a human being is a gift from you. Uh, Father, let us not take it for granted. Let us not hoard that gift, Lord. And let us be generous and share, share our hearts, share our gifts, share our finances, share our experiences, share our joy, our grace, our forgiveness, share our love, Father, abundantly with those that you've placed around us. Thank you, Lord. We pray for that. Thank you. You are an amazing God. We, we don't deserve you. We don't deserve your grace, but we get it anyway. I pray, Father, that you will give us the courage to give it away. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Guys, I'm, I'm going to step in the back of, back of the room with a couple of elders there. And, um, and if, you, uh, if you're here this morning and you just need some prayer or, or you haven't uh, given your life to Jesus Christ and you feel like that's something that you really need to do, I recommend that, by the way. Salvation is a beautiful thing. Come on back. Let us pray with you. Uh, we'll be in the back of the room. Uh, for the rest of us, let, let's worship. Let's worship with all of our hearts. And if you have joy in your heart, man, just share it through song. Uh, if you have struggle in your heart, man, just open up and ask God to speak to you right now. Thank you guys so much.
so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. Gave. So where does generosity come from? Yeah. Let's go and be, let's go be like Christ, man. Let's go love, be generous, pour your heart out, pour what God has given you into those around you. Love you, church. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, okay? Cheers.